Hi, good morning. And uh, this is the Polyki PKD3-4000 piezo D33 meter used to measure the D33 of ceramic single crystal or polymer. And this meter can measure up to 4000 picocoulomb per newton. That's very important because if you are working on single crystal PM and PT, that can have D33 over 2000. So this is a very good meter. And the, the connection of this meter is quite simple. Here is only one data cable, okay? Only one data cable connected to the back of, of the D33 and, and to the shaker, okay? You cannot make a mistake. And this one just a, a power cable. And these two are the false out, output and the D33 output that you can connect to a multimeter or oscilloscope to check the a value if you want to control it by computer or something external device. Okay. And this one also, you can use it at either 110 volts or 220 volts that you can switch by yourself very easily. And this is a static fault sensor that can be used at 100 to 240 volts. Okay. And then now let's turn on the meter. I turn on the D33 meter force. Just, just press that button, you see it, it, it start. And also turn on the static fault sensor. The static force sensor measures the force. When you load the sample over here, and there's the force. It's in the old days, it's difficult to control it. But over here, you can read the force is that one newton, zero newton, or 10 newton, up to 10 newton, okay? Now let's check the, first let's check the, the force sensor. Right now, because the two electrodes, they do not contact each other, the force should be zero, okay? And you can easily zero the force by pushing the down button for three seconds. Okay, for example. Now it's zero, right? And then the, now let's go to the D33 uh, meter. Okay. And uh, D33 meter, there is a safe or, or, or fast mode. And uh, there are also, you can you can do the 0 0.1 range, which up to 400 picocoulomb per newton, or one range, which up to uh, the, the, the 4,000 picocoulomb per newton. And this button measure the force, or the D33, right? So, and this one is a zero. You, you can zero the value as we are going to talk in a few minutes. And this one for calibration. And the force, let's do a calibration. Let me put it at times one range. And uh, to do the calibration over here, we have a calibration standard. And this standard has D33 about 254. And you can load the standard over here. It's easy to do calibration. Okay. You can feel actually, this is a, the shaker generator dynamic force, 250 millinewton or 0 0.5 newton. You just load it over here. The force is a little bit too high. You can use a very low force actually, maybe one newton or whatever, a, a few a couple of newton. So, and now let's read this value. But this three three should be two hundred and fifty four. And right now we read two hundred and eighty, right? So that's why we need to do a calibration. Let me see here. Yeah. So when I push it here, it shows a dynamic force. That's a two hundred and fifty seven mini newton. Okay. I push it down, it shows a, uh when I push it down, it shows a, uh the force. Okay, is about zero point two eight newton. But when I put it out, this is a D33 value, that's about 256. And uh, if you want to do calibration, you can use a small screwdriver here to adjust it, make it exactly 254. But here it's close enough. I do not have to do it. The other one is right now we do the, it's a positive. When I switch this calibration standard, it should also be, it, it should become negative. In general, the positive and negative value should be the same, okay? For example, you see, this is the negative. They are pretty close. Again, the theoretical value 254 minus plus 2%. And if you want to make it exactly 254, you can use small screwdriver to adjust here, okay? And for us, this is good enough, okay? So the calibration, the partial calibration, and now let's measure a piezo ceramic. I mean, single crystal is made by TRIs. Piezo electric uh, uh, single crystal PM and NPT. And with gold electrode, and uh, one centimeter by one centimeter and 500 micron thickness. Okay, uh, you can load it between the two probes. It's again, it's very easy to use. Okay, you do it uh, 
when you touch each other, you just need to maintain a small force, okay? See here? Very slowly, it's just about, okay, touch the static force is about 1.13 Newton, actually it's negative because it's compression. When you see the value is actually 1480 picofarad per, new, uh, per Newton, okay? And if you move it up a little bit, you see? Okay, if I flip over, I should get another value, right? You see? Oops. Yeah, the force is a little bit too big, you know? So you see? So it's about 1400, about 1400, or 1300 in, in that range, and certainly this is the negative. And the, the detailed reading actually is very, very complex. It's exactly how big the force you apply. For example, right now it's 1490. It's negative 0 0.87 Newton. If I push it down more, increase the static force, you, you see this meter value changes. It can go to slow, lower, and lower. This is the effect of the static force. For so again, this is the static force. The measurement of force is here. You push the button to static force. It's 0. From the 281 to 80 Newton. Uh, it's a little bit uh, a, a different idea. It's dynamic force, 110 hertz. And this is the static force. It's like DC or AC, okay? The DC is just to hold the sample. The AC is for the measurement. So this is for the single crystal. And uh, uh, this one also can be used to measure a polymer. To measure polymer because like the PBDF we usually have piezoelectric D33 um, only about 20, right? So it's better to use the, the low the low range. When you push it down times 0 0.1, the maximum measurement of value will be about uh, 400. And uh, so uh, to do this, actually, you need to do another calibration because when you do that switch range, the calibration, the circle changed a little bit, so you need to do the calibration again. And uh, I see. Okay, so if I do it again, you see. So yeah, it's it's a little bit uh, too big, right? So you, and again, you have to use a small screwdriver to adjust it to 254. But uh, 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 over here, I do not want to spend too much time on that on that procedure. But you can do it by yourself. But adjust it. Just remember, when you switch range, you have to do the calibration again. Okay. And uh, if we put a piece of piezoelectric polymer film made by PolyK, this is the one twenty micron, right? So a plastic film. So this is the piezoelectric. PVDI film, 120 micron. If I do it over here, you can hear the strong vibration because of the shaker. You see? Okay, over here. So you get a, a value about 23, 24. And this static force is actually four Newton is a little bit too big. Usually we suggest two Newton. And the value will be higher again if you use the lower static force the value will be higher will be higher over here okay you see the value will be 26 even 27 or 28 it depends on the static force so if i use one newton it will be 29. so again this measurement is very tricky particularly for polymer because they are very really soft that's why we add this static force sensor that can tell you exactly what force you apply okay if I measure the negative surface, okay. So you see over here, oh, it's too low. Maybe, maybe it's, it's not the same spot, okay. I do the, the same spot. The force is way too high. Okay, I have to go by, say two Newton, you see, one Newton, about 29, 30, okay. So usually the top and the bottom surface, one is the positive, another one is the negative. They should be the same. If they are not the same, you, you can take an average or use this zero now to adjust it. To adjust it, is, uh, you do not have to because you, you can take an average. But if you do want to a uh, relatively accurate measurement, for example, this PVDF, because this surface may change with area. 
purely I draw a small circle, okay? So first I measure this circle, this surface, right? Okay, I measure this surface, this circle, oh, it falls to B. Okay, if I go to, uh, for example, if I go to 2 Newton, remember the same force is very important. See, it's very sensitive. That's why you need this static force sensor. So you see over here is about uh, uh, 2 Newton, negative 28.5, right? Over here, over here, negative 28.5 Newton, picocoulomb uh, per Newton. If I flip it over, I suppose to get a positive 28.5 or in another range, okay? You see over here, right now, it, something wrong. Maybe I should use a little bit of, yeah, it, it's a little bit of poor combination, okay? So if I do, if, at first I have to go to the two Newton, right? Static fault, it's so sensitive. So you, you see this one is a bit too high. In theory, because the other one is negative 20, 20 to 29 is a positive, so positive too big, I can re zero it, okay? I can make the positive a little bit smaller. Maybe make it a 32, I guess. If I make this one 32, you see? Okay. And I flip it over, that's positive 32. If I flip it, I flip it over. Wait, wait, wait. I have to do positive 32. So, oh, the force to be. So you, you, you have to do this again and again, make sure the top and the bottom, the, the same value. It may take a, a few iteration. Go to 2 Newton. Okay, so it, it's about 30. Now you can increase it to probably 31, negative 31. So something like this. So usually you make sure the positive and the negative have the same value, and the same condition, the same sample support, same static force. Otherwise, you can simply take everything. So that's how to use uh, the piece of this 3 3 meter, right? And uh, in a few minutes, we can also show you how to use the how to use uh, the D31 adapter to measure D31 of ceramic. It's not for polymer. You can only measure the D31 of the ceramic rigid one. And also, yes, we have a D15 adapter that you can be used. You can use it to measure the, the shear mode of this of a piece of ceramic. Okay, thank you.